The Terminator. 2001 Space Odyssey. Metropolis. Whatever comes to each of our minds as to what artificial intelligence is, a humanoid robot or a computer without a body is more or less an impression we have formed based on a movie that we've seen or a book that we read. I want to let you in on a little secret. Artificial intelligence is here, and it's not the Terminator. Here's what AI looks like today. Imagine searching for something on the internet and the search box accurately guessing what you are interested in and giving you suggestions to choose from that you have not asked for. Happens all the time, right? Or using maps to calculate the fastest way to your destination based on real-time street traffic conditions. Have you recently tried to beat the system by choosing an alternative route because you think you know your neighborhood better? I do it all the time, and I lose every time. All these apps are using AI technology to make such accurate predictions. And what's extraordinary is that their computation power goes far beyond human capabilities. Here is how an AI system can monitor millions of customers and group them together into tiny groups of, let's say, 50 people. This is done based on their similarities. When it does find these other 49 people who behave just like you, then it feels like if the system knows you better than you know your own self, suggesting you products, news articles, or ideas you even didn't think that you want to buy, read, or even consider in the first place. This is the artificial intelligence that most of us can understand and feel. The power of personalization AI has can also be used with a different objective, to guide our opinions, and sometimes this is not so obvious. In the latest US presidential elections, demographic, psychographic, and behavioral data was used to identify and classify voters into personality groups. Candidates then delivered personalized messages, tailored to each group's view, with AI algorithms learning in real time which messages were working for each group and altering the narration to better persuade them. It was as if AI virtually gave the candidate the ability to have a conversation with each individual voter, telling them exactly what they needed to hear until he swayed them in his favor. AI is here infiltrating major parts of our daily life, and it's about to have a strong impact where humanity goes next. But before we look into the impact of AI, I'd like to share with you the two factors that have brought AI to the forefront. One, cloud computing is widely available. This virtual space where all your mobile and PC data is being backed up, your cloud. Processing power and storage are now a commodity, and you can buy as much as you like. Number two, the science of analytics has matured. All this information that we collect about the ways that we live, we behave, and interact is constantly growing. This is called big data. Next to big data, we also now have better ways to analyze data, even tell computers how to self-analyze and act upon data constantly learning to self-improve. This very ability to learn and self-improve is the spark of AI. This spark is generated by multiplying analytics with the unlimited scaling up that occurs in the cloud. The product of these two components is miraculously bringing AI to life. What's important to note is that software that trains itself while processing data, it's not the only way to create AI. However, it is the only scalable way that we know of today. That's why the next step in AI is considered to be driven by systems that um, are constantly learning from the collective data set of our society and with lots of processing power. Now, 
let's take a sneak peek into the bright future because AI is going to bring uh, personal assistants in our homes that are going to help us improve our lives with personalized tips for better sleep, health, and well-being. Imagine telling your personal assistant, hey, computer, please observe what I do and cross-check it with what other people are doing, people who have consciously agreed to share their data, and please find out what I, why I don't sleep so well. And after a week or so, your AR assistant goes, Dave, it's five o'clock in the afternoon. This double espresso might ruin your night's sleep, like it did last Wednesday. AI will become a utility. A utility as necessary as electricity and Wi-Fi. As we discussed before, AI operates beyond human capabilities, and therefore we don't have the way or the capacity to understand all of its processes and confirm all of the results. It's really a black box. Some already argue today that this black box could be hacked, malfunctioned, or even deemed untrustworthy. So yeah, in a way, AI could give us more than we can handle. The applications that we create today with their very narrow scope might not be the terminator yet. But if we don't start paying enough attention, it's going to be hasta la vista, baby. Out of all the potential challenges that AI might bring, I would like to focus on one that seems to slip our attention. Potential rise of inequality whenever AI is applied. AI adopts society's commonly accepted inequalities as it's learning from the data that represents our lives. Unfortunately, we are not a perfect society, and neither are our practices. AI is going to pick up on these bad behaviors and multiply them. It could very well automate unfairness, personalize it in an extent and a magnitude that we will no longer be able to identify and harness. This almost certain exponential reproduction of inequalities requires our most immediate attention. Ever-changing technological advancements have always transformed the workplaces and changed our lives. And likewise, AI brings automation that will make entire jobs obsolete. Some professions will not have access to any work at all, upsetting the existing social class structures. This will increase the gap of inequality between the haves and have-nots. But let's consider also the use of AI systems in the job candidate selection process. Think of a system that chats with candidates and assesses certain aspects of their personality, like how they would behave in a crisis situation and so on. This system is truly built with the best intentions. It's designed to discard gender or ethnicity biases. And yes, such a system would assess candidates without prejudgment. However, if we ask the system to go one step further and propose a salary, then we might encounter the following situation. Even without disclosing gender or ethnicity, the data that we are having today on salary dispersion are hiding inequalities accepted by all of us as the norm. These norms will then be embedded within the suggestions of the system, as it's learning from the current conditions. If women engineers today are paid less than men, if the ambition of young professionals is taken advantage of, if people with debt don't negotiate their salaries because they are risk averse, and we accept all this as the norm, then we might accidentally have an artificial intelligence HR system that while unbiased in design, it's still delivering personalized unfairness. Why? Because it's learning from a working environment that discriminates against people in weak positions. Unequal opportunities for access to personal development may also arise. Think of a system discovering that Youths who listen to hip-hop are being raised by single mothers, are living in urban housing, are less likely to be interested in academic scholarships. The system would have to accept this as the norm and therefore not promote scholarship opportunities to them. 
based on millions of data points, but we all understand that that's discrimination. AI doesn't know it, and frankly doesn't care. Now let's look at talents and personality traits. We suffer from misconceptions of what it takes to be successful. We say leaders need to be assertive and maybe even aggressive. That creativity is all about ambiguity, chaos and lack of structure. That actors and singers need to have big egos and so on. Now, AI goes beyond stereotypes and it can look at personalized behavior. A system that is developed to help us become better with our talents will not fall into a stereotype like proposing CEOs on account of the candidate having a tough personality. However, AI is going to learn from what society considers success today, and therefore it might not recognize or endorse given combinations of talent if these are not far proven recipes of success, satisfaction or happiness. AI could ultimately sacrifice disruption in the name of marginal improvement. So how are we preparing to cope with these potential inequalities? We need to finally establish a commonly accepted code of ethics and a legal framework that reflects this. Is this necessary? Yes, it is. What do we do when we find ourselves into a situation where we believe that a system is being unfair to us or it's not delivering equal opportunities? Don't we demand for society to step in? We do. Let's think about this for a moment. AI is all about automation. We could be facing an astonishing number of potential inequalities or false alarms. Legal professionals today are lacking both the necessary education to understand AI and also the legal framework to preside over personalized cases individually. Adding the concept of black box on top, we are lacking the transparency to confirm the results. So, we could ultimately paralyze not only individually, but as a society as a whole, if these potential inequalities or suspicion of unfairness arise and reach their critical mass. So, all these examples show that if we don't pay enough attention and leave AI unsupervised, the problem of inequality is going to exponentially be reproduced. It's going to be automatic, personalized and unfair. Even more, if we don't pay enough attention, AI might become one more hurdle that discourages pioneers. We have historically counted on them to be radical. AI could normalize, sterilize, or even hinder development in the sake of averting statistical improbabilities. When I discuss these concerns, usually someone comes up, brings up the, the fact that the force of AI bears the same power than the atomic power. It's a fair analogy. Back then, scientists stood behind arguments like, if we don't build nukes, they will. I'm just a scientist. This is the inevitable progress. And then one thing led to another, and we got Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And for whatever reason, we had Hiroshima. Did we really have to suffer Nagasaki? This is also my worry when it comes to AI. Like in any revolution, there will be casualties. Some groups will inevitably suffer disproportionately, but is all of this going to be inevitable? Couldn't we somehow steer AI to our benefit? This very system could become the answer to our problems, not creating new ones. It could bring democracy to a new level. It can make us happier and healthier. A society that is more open and fair. How can we achieve such progress instead of an AI Nagasaki? Dear friends, we as users have the power to steer AI to our benefit by supporting conscious AI initiatives. How? With our data, of course. The same data that the AI systems are going to use 
to train themselves. We have the power to choose which AI system will become the next default application. A free economy, it's not only free for companies, it's also free for customers. We can choose which products, services, and AI systems we are going to endorse simply by choosing some over others. We should know which services we are using and how our data is being used. Support companies who respect our data, who give us the option to own our data, and the option to share our data for good causes. We need to continue sharing as much data as we can, good data. Dear AI professionals and data scientists, we have to stop considering ourselves merely scientists and think of ourselves more as practitioners, as doctors, as craftsmen. We need to consider the methods that we use, the projects that we are working on, and the companies that we are enabling with care. We must focus more on AI practices that can help us understand how the systems are drawing conclusions. We need to work on making AI transparent, not a black box. We need to introduce rules that somehow bring ethics within AI and guidelines that ease the unfairness in our society. Dear professionals in social sciences and humanities, you are no longer representatives of the so-called dead sciences. You are more relevant and necessary than ever. AI practitioners are building a functioning AI body. We need you to give it soul. Decisions that have an impact on uh, ethics in AI are being made by software engineers with the best possible intentions, but they are not trained nor they have the aptitudes to understand the impact of these decisions on society. With AI as our next commodity and personal assistant, we need a complete restructuring of our legal structure, our ethical framework, our educational system, and so much more to reinvent our lives and learn how to learn to live alongside AI in meaningful ways. And we need all of you. We need psychologists. We need sociologists. We need philosophers, linguists, to become readily available to the organizations that are building the future of AI. It's vital that you actively participate in these decisions. So I ask you this, are we going to leave the power to change the quality of our future in the hands of the few or in the hands of the unified community with a specific vision for equal opportunity for us all? We have the chance to create artificial intelligence that liberates us from our biases, that empower us to be happier and healthier, that motivates us to reach our full potential, we might as well have the chance to finally become the society we have always aspired to be, one driven by humanity, righteousness, tolerance, equality, and achievement. Thank you.